Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat. Today's novel, I feel, which is a tragic one. Why do I say that? Because we as humans are not isolated, right? We are a product of our society, our environment. Wherever we are staying, it affects us. So as you know, the world wars, in fact, any kind of war has disturbed humanity from then to now. Many people die, people lose their families, and the after effects of war are so, so horrific that people enter shell shock, they enter depression. This is all what we will find today in Mrs. Dalloway. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, published in the year 1925, Virginia probably chose this theme because somewhere even she had fits of anxiety or depression in her life. And you know that Virginia committed suicide. That is how she ended her life. So this novel definitely is very close to her heart, Mrs. Dalloway. Genre is, it's a modernist fiction and literary period is modernism. Setting, like Ulysses, is only one day. Yes, one day in mid-June of 1923 in London. And about what was happening then, England is struggling with the horrendous effects of World War I, although the war ended in 1918, but its effects were still there. People were walking on the road. For example, soldiers who were lucky to be alive, they were suffering from shell shock. They were walking like ghosts on the road. Aeroplanes were flying and people were still worried where the bombs will be thrown on them. Right? So this is all what will be the backdrop of Mrs. Dalloway. Okay? Setting, as I told you, one day in mid-June 1923 in London. And the first character that we will meet is the name of the novel, Mrs. Dalloway. Dalloway is her surname. Her name is Clarissa. Clarissa Dalloway. Clarissa Dalloway is a middle-aged, upper-class Londoner who married a rich Richard Dalloway. Rich Richard Dalloway. Who is Richard? He's a member of parliament. Basically, he's a politician in the Conservative Party. Here, the topical theme is politics of that time discussed. Britain during that time had Conservative Party, but very soon the Labour Party would take over it, okay? Because Conservative Party definitely was conservative in its approach, right? Now, a little bit about Clarissa. Clarissa appreciates life. She is a socialite. But her mood swings are frantic. For example, at one moment she's happy. At other moments she's sad and dull, contemplating life. She wants to communicate to people, but she feels that every soul is private. She wants to keep that sense of privacy. Okay? Now, very fondly throughout this novel, you will find that Clarissa keeps on thinking about her growing years in her hometown, in her village of Borton. Okay? Borton in England. And also, she fears death. She feels that living even one day is difficult. Death is approaching, okay? But as I told you, she's a socialite and she feels that being an upper-class woman, throwing parties is like her responsibility. She feels that people gather in these parties, they share moments of happiness, they connect with each other and she feels that she's doing a great job in throwing parties. So this day is all about Clarissa's preparation of the evening party, which will be at her home. Okay. So you understood Clarissa married to Richard, the member of parliament. Easy, right? And this party, let me tell you, is going to be attended by all the elite class people of London, high class society. Now let's talk about fear and wonder in the hearts of people then. Now, Clarissa Dalloway is out in the market, basically at Bond Street. She's gone there to buy flowers for the evening party. She sees that a car crosses by and, you know, a fat lady is sitting inside the car. This lady is of important stature. The car is literally blowing horns and it, it seems like an important person in, is inside. Then an aeroplane is seen flying above and the aeroplane is releasing smoke behind in the name. The name is Toffee. Basically, this aeroplane is showcasing an advertisement of Toffee. Okay. So here the people, they are in fear also and in wonder also. 
like everybody is taking this aeroplane this fast moving car in different perspective okay people are afraid also and they wonder also looking at the car the aeroplane it's like the world is still in that shock of world war okay easy understood now few lines from novel i have taken because the novel is called mrs dalloway we should enter her personality a little bit the narrator is third person omniscient so how the narrator describes clarissa you should know first she had a perpetual sense as she watched the taxi cabs of being out out far out to sea and alone she always had the feeling that it was very very dangerous to live even one day not that she thought herself clever or much out of the ordinary and another way how you know she was described listen she particularly practically everything she enjoyed practically everything she had a sense of comedy that was really exquisite but she needed people always people to bring it out with the inevitable result that she frittered her time away lunching dining giving these incessant parties of hers talking nonsense saying things she did not mean blunting the edge of her mind losing her discrimination understood did you understand a little bit about mrs dalloway yes after that let's meet another important character in the novel his name is peter walsh peter walsh clarissa has got the flowers other important things from the market and she's returning home as she returns home a visitor is waiting to meet her this unexpected guest is called peter walsh who is peter peter and clarissa grew together in borton they were intellectually similar critical of each other had many arguments they were always in each other's company clearly clarissa and peter were in love yes they were but when peter asked for marriage from clarissa she replied no because she chose security women want security in marriage that is what clarissa chose so she chose the rich richard over this peter whose future was bleak after peter was rejected by clarissa this is the past this heartbroken peter left for india where he lived for many years he had affairs with younger women why because peter is very afraid of aging age is a very important theme discussed in this play age and time age and time okay so you understood peter walsh right and as i told you this novel has no plot it discusses one day it discusses stream of consciousness where virginia woolf is entering the minds of the people all the major characters are thinking about their past thinking thinking and the novel is moving so there is no plot in mrs dalloway okay meeting clarissa after so many years peter is happy as well as sad terrified the two chit chat about days gone by about their lives they are filled with nostalgia they enter their thoughts here theme is stream of consciousness and then peter asks clarissa you know are you happy which means are you happy in your marriage before clarissa could answer clarissa's daughter elizabeth enters therefore peter leaves and where does he go he goes to this famous park of london which is called as regent's park and he starts taking a walk there and at the park just for thrill he stalks a young woman that is peter's character okay so now let's meet the daughter of dalloways her name is elizabeth dalloway She's seventeen years old, and she is an attractive girl who shares a close bond with nature. That is, she prefers the countryside, and she does not prefer all these night parties that her mother organizes. No matter, she loves her mother as much as she loves her history tutor. Can you imagine? A history tutor is also shown here. Elizabeth's history tutor is Miss Doris Kilman, who is a very self-pitying lady. She's poor. She's unattractive. She feels that life has been very bad to her. She has no reason to be happy. This history tutor, Miss Doris Kilman, and you know, Mrs. Dalloway and Miss Doris Kilman do not like each other. One is mother. One is tutor of Elizabeth. Still, they try to get along well for the sake of Elizabeth. okay easy now miss kilman and elizabeth they leave for shopping 
Okay. Now let's change the entire scene. Let's leave the Dalloways and let's now come to a person called Septimus Warren Smith. This is where you will understand shell shock or PTSD or depression, which was so relevant during that time. Who is Septimus Warren Smith? Septimus is in his 30s, a veteran of World War I. He fought in World War I. Before fighting there, he was a romantic and a diehard fan of Shakespeare. In fact, Clarissa and Septimus are shown as characters parallel to each other. Septimus, romantic, loved Shakespeare. Clarissa also loves Shakespeare. Very often she quotes from Shakespeare. Okay, let's return to Septimus. But the war in which he fought has left him hopeless, speechless and suicidal. He's suffering from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder and shell shock. He loved Shakespeare and poetry before the war, but now he does not know how to communicate. Now, just like Peter, he's there. Septimus is there at Regent Park along with his wife, whose name is Lucrezia or Rizia. Here, let's meet who? Lucrezia or Rizia. Who is Lucrezia? Lucrezia is this Italian wife of Septimus. They fell in love when Septimus was stationed at Milan, Italy. So Lucrezia left everything and came to England to settle with Septimus. But after the war, Septimus's mental condition is not fine. Lucrezia feels lonely, exhausted. She wants to meet her family in Europe. She wants to return, but she has no choice. And Lucrezia has started the treatment of Septimus under two doctors. I will tell you their names, okay? Now, who is Evans? Evans. Septimus, sitting at Regent's Park, hallucinates about his soldier friend whose name is Evans. In the war, Septimus and Ivans, they fought side by side. And Ivans was always very uncomfortable in the company of women. But he was very happy with Septimus. Septimus and Ivans behaved like together, like, quote, two dogs playing on a hearth rug. They had to be together, share with each other, fight with each other, quarrel with each other. Here the theme is homosexuality. Probably Septimus and Ivans were in love. But Ivans died fighting in World War I and Septimus now has lost his ability to feel emotions. Here the theme discussed by Virginia Woolf is death. How death of a person impacts the other person. You know, literally, uh, I'll tell you, Septimus hallucinates. Septimus feels he's a prophet or a divine person. Septimus has these fits of anxiety, fits of depression. And who is treating him? As I told you, two doctors are treating Septimus, Dr. Holmes and Sir William Bradshaw. Let's listen to these people. Who are they? They are shown in a negative light in this novel, doctors, psychiatrists. Septimus, on the advice you know, of his wife, Rizia, is taking treatment of his depression from Dr. Holmes. Dr. Holmes feels that Septimus is fine. He's just in a jump, in a funk. He's just in a funk, which means we must distract Septimus with a hobby. We must give him some profession and he will be fine. This is what Dr. Holmes thinks about Septimus. Whereas Sir William Bradshaw, who's a very famous London psychiatrist, is shown as a bully in this novel. He bullies his patients. He wants, you know, to tell the patients that I am right. So he decides that Septimus must be separated from his wife, Rezia, and taken to the country asylum for treatment. And, you know, he has this separation anxiety. Septimus has this separation anxiety. He has already lost Ivans. He does not want to lose his wife, Rezia, now. He does not want to go to the mental asylum. But the doctors of that time did not understand all this. Rather than accepting, rather than society accepting these soldiers who have returned from the war, According to the society, oh, we have won the war, everything is fine, it is all gaga, wawa, let's party. But the people, people like Septimus, who saw death front, you know, right in front of them, nobody was able to understand these soldiers. Here the theme is social criticism, okay? Now, theme is lack of communication. How it is shown through Richard Dalloway and Clarissa Dalloway's relationship. 
there is a scene in the novel where Richard is having lunch with influential friends of his, two friends. And while returning home, he buys roses for his wife, Clarissa. Richard is a good guy. His heart is good. He loves his wife, Clarissa. He loves his daughter, Elizabeth. But there is lack of communication. That is, Richard cannot, cannot showcase his feelings openly. So at home, rather than saying, I love you, Clarissa, he just offers the roses to her. Clarissa takes the roses. The couple sit quietly. Clarissa wonders about the privacy of the soul. And also she thinks about her marital life, that our husband and wife are also separated. How a husband and wife also have lack of communication. Now the novel takes a turn because this Septimus commits suicide. Setting is Septimus home. Dr. Holmes arrives to talk to Septimus. Rezia, who's a hat maker by profession, Rezia tries to stop Septimus, that, uh, sorry, tries to stop Dr. Holmes. Do not arrive Septimus. He's literally hallucinating right now. But Dr. Holmes says, no, 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 I need to talk to Septimus. And you know, Septimus thinks that Dr. Holmes is a monster who wants to kill him. So, you know, trying to protect himself, trying to feel emotions, trying to show communication to the society, Septimus, when he sees Dr. Holmes approaching towards him, jumps outside the window and he dies. This is the end of Septimus shown in the novel, Mrs. Dalloway. Now, after this, let's come to the dinner party. The day is ending. And as I told you, Mrs. Dalloway is only one day of 1923. It will end with the dinner party at Dalloway's house. Clarissa's dinner party. All the famous people shown in the novel are present here. In fact, even Prime Minister passes by, you know, in this party. Peter is there in this party. Clarissa feels nervous. She wants to be this perfect hostess. She wants that everything should go well. People should enjoy, connect, laugh, gaga, everything. But she feels that, you know, the party will be a failure. But then all of a sudden she sees her old school friend, Sally Seton. Sally Seton. This character you should know. Homosexuality entering again. All the famous people are at this dinner, as I told you. She meets Sally Seton and flashes of memory enter Clarissa's soul looking at Sally. Sally was once a radical and Clarissa's friend in school. She was a tomboy. She was a revolutionary. Who? Sally. Sally and Clarissa had a great liking for each other, which was more towards, you know, like Clarissa liked her more. Clarissa loved Sally passionately. When she saw Sally, she felt, you know, how you feel when you look at a man. That is how she felt looking at Sally. And there is a moment in the novel where they even share a kiss, okay? Remember, Clarissa thinks, listen to these lines from the novel. Then came the most exquisite moment of her whole life. Whose life? Clarissa's life. Passing a stone urn with flowers in it. Sally stopped, picked a flower, kissed Clarissa on the lips. The whole world might have turned upside down. The others disappeared. There she was alone with Sally. But currently, Sally also then married a famous, rich, influential man. She's now a mother of five boys. Okay, that is how the novel is moving. Everything is going in the thought process, thought process, a lot of interior monologues, soliloquies, a lot of such things, such kind of narration is shown in Mrs. Dalloway. Now, how does the novel end? Clarissa comes to know about Septimus' suicide and she feels a kind of connection with Septimus. Sir William Bradshaw, the psychiatrist, remember, his wife, whose name is Lady Bradshaw. So Lady Bradshaw is also at Clarissa's party. While they are chit-chatting, Lady Bradshaw tells Clarissa about Septimus' suicide, uh, you know, during the day. Clarissa all of a sudden feels sad, listening to Septimus' story, how he fought in World War, how he was fighting depression, how he committed suicide just that day. And all of a sudden, she feels sad. She feels a kind of kinship with Septimus because Septimus, just like Clarissa, wanted to be heard. Both of them want to communicate. She goes away from the hustle of her party, shares a moment of silence with herself, admires the purity of Septimus' soul. And then, you know, somebody at the party is waiting for her. Actually, two people are waiting for her. Peter Walsh 
and Sally sit on. Peter and Sally are standing together. They are like, Clarissa's gone. Let her come. Let her come. And she returns. So as she comes back, Peter is happy as well as ter terrified. And he says, there she is. Actually, Peter uses this line a lot for Clarissa in the past. There she is. There she is. Which means Clarissa was seen everywhere. Okay. With this, Mrs. Dalloway ends. How did you like it? It was nice. This is Hina from Team Wallet. If you like Mrs. Dalloway, what will you have to do? Comment and of course, share our channel with your friends and relatives. Few important points from examination point of view. First, Mrs. Dalloway also appears in Virginia Woolf's first novel called The Voyage Out. Mrs. Dalloway also appears in Virginia Woolf's five stories. But all these women are different. They are not the same Mrs. Dalloway. Second important point, Virginia Woolf originally titled Mrs. Dalloway as The Hours. As I told you, time is an important theme. Big Ben is shown in this novel. You know, the clock is ticking. The people are moving. The chapters are moving with the strike, you know, of clock of Big Ben. It's like that in the novel. So original title was The Hours. And as I told you, this novel showcases stream of consciousness storytelling, where every scene closely tracks the momentary thoughts of a particular character. In stream of consciousness, there is no distinction between direct speech and indirect speech. And there are different forms of narration. How? There is omniscient description. There is indirect interior monologue. There is soliloquy. This is how. And there is stream of consciousness. Like this is, you know, it's the main thing under which you'll find monologue, soliloquy, and all these things. Good? Nice? Easy? <laughs> Easy. Take care of yourself, physical health, mental health. Be happy. Take care. Bye-bye.